Hello, 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 and welcome to Shared Space. How you doing today, Chapo? Good evening. Tried, tried to get some rest at, uh, during Easter. Almost happened. I didn't get anything of the sort, and it <laughs> looks like my video is going slow. That is so annoying. Anywho, so welcome to Shared Space with Quita and Chap. I'm Quita Chancy, the founder and director of Smaltimore Homes, and we build micro shelters and tiny homes for folks who are unhoused. And Chap, who are you, sir? Tell us, what are you going to share with us today? Oh, right. Yeah, there's so much, right? Stop playing. Um, so I am uh, I full-time on call chaplain for Baltimore City uh, through the police department. Uh, that is a privilege to serve there and serve our community. Um, and then I wear many hats along the way, I volunteer in many different spaces, and we try to connect people um, and and really showcase people who are doing good things in Baltimore City. Hence, we are uh, shared space. Um, tonight, uh, you guys know, you've heard us talk before about Breadcoin um, and one of, you know, as one of the nonprofit partners we try to uh, support. Um, one of our artists, we have two art, we have two artists uh, on tonight, um, Elise Bryan and Gina Busick, uh, both local from Maryland uh, near Baltimore area. Um, and Elise has been uh, gracious enough to share some of her proceeds this month for, for um, any art that she can sell for uh, to support Breakcoin. So it's a neat way for the art community to plug into efforts in uh, nonprofit stuff going on. So uh, I applaud that. Um, and I think without further ado, can we bring our artists on, Q? Yeah, that's dope. Let's go ahead and bring Elise on. Let's talk to her. Let's All right, so we Elise got Elise and, and, and right. Gina. Right. So Elise and Gina have joined us. Uh, welcome to the show, guys. Hey. So uh, this, this is my little cousin, Gina, um, and she is a fantastic photographer. She Let me tell you guys, um, she does not live in Baltimore City, but she is down on Pennsylvania Avenue in Lawrence, and she has the pictures to prove it. Um, the <laughs> last time we did Pensy Ave Parade, um, which we're doing again this year, June 11th, uh, she was. I, I asked her, I said, hey, can you come help serve? And she just showed up, and she took phenomenal, beautiful pictures of Pensy Ave that um, we'll put together and have out and probably hopefully be able to use to um, – to share the the uh, parade this year, uh, and at least Brian, she's uh, she's been a guest before with us, and um, she is making moves and and expanding her uh, her artistic space. From what I hear, I've I've seen and heard and and uh, new things that you're doing. So please uh, share with us, Elise, what's going on. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, you know, for sharing the space with me today, uh, I appreciate it. And um, excited to be on with you, Gina, too. So um, and build the community. So I think, uh, yeah, I'm I'm really excited. It's it's something that I just launched a website uh, at this point a week and a half ago on April 8th. And uh, one of the commitments I've always had in um, the insurance business was donations monthly and really being a part of a bigger cause. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing with the website and any pieces that are sold is give a percentage of the profits to Breadcoin. So I'm excited about that to see how we can make a difference. And, you know, every time you, you buy a piece of art, there's a percentage of the profits that go towards that that are going to be donated. And I'm just going to pick a charity each month um, with, you know, plenty of input, maybe small to more homes if there's um, could benefit from so some proceeds. That's something we can do next month, maybe. Absolutely. You know, I'm down for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I know there's a lot of people in need. So that's one of the things I definitely want to put out there. If anyone wants to contact me, um, you know, for suggestions or um, any place where it could use the help, then definitely we can we can put that on the calendar and dedicate a month to it. But I'm just excited to be here and have some good conversations tonight. So you said that you just launched your website about a week ago, right? Yeah. What was the... What was the, um, I guess, the goal behind the launch? And did you have any goals? Was it just to put the information out there? What What were you thinking about as you were launching this website? Mm -hmm. So I, I've been, I was drawn to art since I was a little kid. So I used to do portraits of my family, and and it, it's funny when they tell me about it because my aunt, um, I guess I when I drew her when I was little, probably like three or four. And I just drew her mouth as a line with two teeth sticking out. 
And she was like, why did you draw me this way? And I'm like, well, that's how you smile like this. <laughs> and I did this like funny thing. So I, I kind of ha have always been um, attuned to that. And I started at, I, I went to Temple University in Philly um, and I was there for two years. I first started thinking I wanted to do psychology. Then I was maybe going to do be a lawyer and then all these things. And then I took an art class because that was one of the things we had to take. And I kind of fell back in love with it. And I was like, now I'm going to transfer to art school. So I transferred to art school. I did two years at Tyler School of Art. Um, and at the time I was doing, working with someone who had his own business, doing decorative painting and murals. So we would go to people's houses, do murals, do paintings. And then in 08, when things went south, um, you know, financially for a lot of people that was not getting a lot of business. So then, um, you know, I, I switched over. I did some other things. I found the company that I had uh, been with for the last 10 years, the buy agency, American income. I talked a little bit about that when I was on before. And um, that's a an, an life insurance company and we get uh, renewal income. So when I started with the company, January of 2012, I said to myself, I'm going to commit to this for 10 years. Um, and that's, you know, hundred percent commission sales job. So I started in Philly um, make, got a couple promotions there, built a team, went to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania was at, so I was in Philly for three years doing it, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania for two years doing it. That's what brought me to Maryland. Um, uh, when I came to Maryland, May of 2017, so five years in Maryland and I just hit my 10 years in January. So it was time to evaluate, you know, that was my goal when I started, do it for 10 years, have the renewal and residual income in, to, you know, to, to explore the art. And I kind of hit the 10 years. And, and so much of what I did with leading my team there was trying to inspire people, motivate them, help them heal, help them grow as individuals through personal development, things that I got from the opportunity um, that I was exposed to. So now my goal is to try and do that on a, on a, a bigger scale, you know, instead of just doing it at, in, in my work at the insurance company, kind of expand it and use art as a way to help people in, in all those different areas that, you know, we find, I think we all kind of do that. That's why we're drawn to this type of community. Right, right. Absolutely, absolutely. And so now, um, Gina, you tell me Hi. when you started, um, you're stri not strictly, but you, your specialty, ah, your specialty is photography, photography, yeah. right? Okay. Yep, yep. I know how folks like to put us in boxes and I'm sure you can do much more than just take <laughs> photographs. But, yep. um, and I'm pretty sure we met last year at the um, Pensieve parade and you were out there taking pics. So tell me how you got started in photography. Yeah, good question. Yeah, so um, you know, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Um, like like we said, my name is Gina Busick, and I'm the face behind Eleven O Six Studios. Um, I am a Maryland-based photographer. You know, I uh, I really love taking pictures of like nature and wildlife, um, and like scenic slash, um, you know, uh, landscape type of pictures. Um, but I also take you know portraits and um, couple slash engagement shoots and maternity shoots and stuff like that. Um, you know, as I love, you know, if I can take pictures and create and inspire somebody else, that inspires me to like keep wanting to create great things. Um, so I, um, I'm on Instagram and um, I launched my account in August of last year. Um, and it's been fun. It's been a learning experience. And um I love looking at things and just trying to capture them, uh, whether that's like emotional or just the beauty of what's around us. Um, so, so yeah, I'm just having a lot of fun with it and, um, and learning as I go. So it's been good. Yeah, that's exciting. So do either of you have um, your pictures or your candles or anything handy that you can show us on camera do you have any of your your doodads <laughs> widgets or trinkets like show us some of your your magic yeah good question um let me see here just mm -hmm. a second <laughs> <laughs> uh-oh Elise, what about you? Do you have any of your um, any of your art or candles present? 
So I have, um, yeah, I do have a piece over there. I actually just took a bunch of plate pieces to um, the the shop I'm using to do uh, copies of the art. So I, I kind of cleaned out and, and and I got thankfully some orders. Of course, of course. <laughs> so some copies are being made. Um, now there is one here. Let me see if I can take this off here. And then of course at um, elisebryan.com or at least that Brian that art on Instagram, but here's one um, painting that I happen to have in um, actually oh, in the house. Yeah. Oh, I like it. It gives me um, Garden of Eden. Mm hmm. <laughs> well, that's what I know. What we've talked about this before. The book, The Alchemist. Yeah. Right. So that yeah. I don't know if you remember that uh, scene in the book where he asks him to uh, become the wind, it's towards the end. And it's the whole scene of him and he's talking about how, um, you know, he starts talking to the sun and the wind and um, he, he starts, it's all, it becomes this resonating theme of it's all made by the same hand. So if God made the wind um, and God made us, then we are the wind and we are God and it's everything is one. So that was actually the right. inspiration to that, that painting. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And it looks like Gina is showing us some of her masterpieces. What are we looking at here, Gina? <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, just a couple here. Um, I don't know if you guys can see. Um, it's probably a reflection. But, um, yeah, this is, like, oh, yeah, fall leaves. Um, so, yeah, just frame that. I put a grain effect on there. So it just – it's more of a vibe um, than maybe – but it's more than what meets the eye. Um, this is, I don't know if you guys can see that. <laughs> um, oh, so I went, yeah, so I went to Wyoming, Yellowstone, and um, yeah, we uh, got a picture. I got a picture of a uh, buffalo and edited it uh, black and white. So there's that one. Um, this one is a fern. Ferns are my favorite plant. Um, so this is in the fall time. Um, I think the colors are really rich and uh, just beautiful. So yeah, there's bright that reds and greens. I see it. I love it. Oh my god, yeah. I love like sunsets and sunrises too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so these are like five by seven uh, pictures, but I can print you know bigger. Um, but yeah, this is the landscape uh, photograph there. That's also in Yellowstone National Park. Um, and then this is um, the fall time when there was ice uh, on the trees um, and the sun was just hitting it just right and it was glistening and um, I decided to take a photo <laughs> of, of that. So those are just a couple of them, but um, you can find more of my work on Instagram. Awesome, <laughs> on awesome. So what yeah. we can do is Chap has, I think, Elise's site queued up, or let me see. And I love the buffalo. If you, if there's, um, have you ladies heard of Rory Vaden at all? He's an author, Rory Vaden. I don't believe um, so. No. Not sure. Yeah. Yeah. He has a book called Take the Stairs, um, and it's all about self discipline. But he also tells a story about how he grew up, maybe in Wyoming, but he said it's one of, I, I forget where he grew up, but it's one of the few places where they have cow and buffalo. Okay. And he tells a story, and it's, and this is a huge motivator for me. I actually have a buffalo picture um, that I bought. I, I sought it out after I heard him speak about this. So he said how this is one of the few places with Buffalo and cow and they respond so differently when the storm comes that when the storm's coming over the mountain, when cows see the storm coming over the mountain, they try and run away from it. So when they're trying to run away from the storm, they actually stay under the storm because as they're running away and they move so slow, they the time that they're under the storm and they're going through that suffering is extended. But when buffalo see the storm coming over the mountain, they charge at it and they go through the storm. So they shorten their suffering. So it's a metaphor wow. for you know, how to live life. So that when you saw the buffalo, I instantly thought about that. And that's oh. I always, that motivates me, you know, so often when I think about how he talked about that. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. That's that's definitely a great perspective on life. And um, really yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah, because it's like they're going through the same storm, right? Like yeah. literally going through the same storm, but handling it differently. Yeah, that that is great. Okay, so Rory Vaden. That's thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I love it. All right, guys, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. So my, my camera's not uh, not on at the time at the at the moment, but I got um. I have a couple of things I wanted to share from our artists. So uh, I'll start with the leads because I was looking at her website while we're talking and even before the show. Um, and this uh, piece is something that just stopped me out of all the things you had up there. That I, I, um, I don't know if you want to share or talk about it, but um, this is one of the pieces on her site. And um, after you talk about it, we can I can back up and show people, you know, um, how, how to uh, plug in and what it looks like on the homepage. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that I actually, as I mentioned, I just kind of built this out. So I'm still working on it. And this is the first website I've ever built. So I watched a lot of webinars on, on how to do it. So <laughs> I'm still adding all my descriptions. But um, this was actually uh, something from a magazine of people, an article about Alzheimer's, uh, which is actually what my grandma died with, with Alzheimer's. My great grandmother died with Alzheimer's. So it's really close to my family. And I was extremely close with both of my grandmothers on my mom's side and my dad's side. Um, so it, it's really, I don't know, have it, has anyone ever had that close to you at all? Have you ever experienced that someone close to you with that? Yeah. So my great aunt had um, dementia and early set on time or Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and she didn't have any children. So a lot of her adult life, she was in like assisted care and was, would curse people out and was super honorary, but still super loving. So we have, you know, those um, disjointed memories mm -hmm. of that experience. But mm -hmm. yeah, so I have dealt it, dealt with it and have seen it. Mm -hmm. So you know exactly what I mean. They, it's like they become a different person altogether. Um, so you know, bec and I don't. I think it's a little delayed. So I don't want to be speaking over you, Quita. But I think it's a little delayed. So I'm missing some of the audio a little bit. But um, so that was something. And we used to make scones. So I remember, uh, you know, I was at her house and we were making these scones, and she forgot the recipe. And that was like, you know, I just got in the car and I cried my eyes out. So that's what. This is about if you know anyone that is experiencing that, a lot of times they hide it at first. Um, so I chose the title Between You and I because in the image, because it's almost like they're they're hiding. So it, it can go way beyond Alzheimer's. It could be anything, you know, between you and I could mean a secret that's between you and another person. Um, it could mean something that's a blockage between you and that person. To me, that's what the cloth symbolizes. It could be you know, something between you that's creating a blockage where you just can't connect with that person. So a lot of my work is really based around that idea of connecting with others, because I think there's so much with, that has evolved with our civilization, with technology, where we could connect more, but it almost keeps us apart, you know, because we can connect with people on social media. And now we don't call them on the phone anymore, you know, because we could do that. Now we don't see them in person anymore. So I really kind of play with that idea a lot. Um, and, and what I hope to do is really make art that's going to allow people to have discussions that you wouldn't normally have, allow people to connect in a way that you normally wouldn't connect. And, and what excites me is that everyone can look at the same thing and bring their own experience to it. And it creates the space for people to talk about their own experiences, their own feelings by looking at the same image, image and seeing it differently because it's filtered through your past. So that's, I, I like to hear what everyone else has to say. <laughs> I, you know what, I'm still marinating on it. I'm gonna be honest, but when I saw it, it, it um, as I was, you know, looking at the different um, pieces that you had to share and, and in different forms, right? it looks like you do postcards and prints. Um, and so maybe you can uh, maybe talk about that process and how you got to that Um you know, or, or how do you get to that space where you're comfortable and confident with your art and you, and you want to make it more sustainable? Because um, that's that's really important information to share, especially with our younger artists as they evolve, because if we can elevate them and empower them earlier, then we get more art from them. Right. And they create more content and their content is also cultivated um, more efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, but this one, I'm, I'm still marinating. I just I really appreciate a lot about it. Number one, um, uh, you know, uh, me and Elise and Gina may be perceived as white, but we we all family, and, and Quita will tell you that too. 
So I appreciate that your perspective included someone that didn't look like you, someone who was not the same gender. Um, you know, honestly, the, the smart ass in me, I appreciated like between you and I, cause he's covering his eyes. Right. So for me that the, the title spoke and put it in context for me. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just, yeah, I'm still marinated on it, but I really, I just, I appreciate, this is the one I appreciated. I think, um, I won't say the most cause I saw a lot of good stuff, but that one made me stop in this moment and want to share that. So mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Um, Thank uh, you, what man. do you guys think? Yeah, I think that Dave brought up a lot of good points, you know, um, and I totally agree with majority, you know, most of what he said. I think it's a beautiful piece. I think you're a great artist. And um, yeah, the human connection and how we um, just connect and how we talk to each other and, and everything is a lot of just our, you know, human experience. You know, we're all experiencing the world, this world together. And um, yeah, when you're hit with a disease and it's um, it makes it harder to connect with one another, you know, it's, it's devastating. And um, I think you portrayed um, that story just beautifully. And uh, like I said, you're, you're a wonderful artist. It, it looks amazing. Thank you. And yeah, your work looks awesome too. It's hard to see with the glare. I have to check you on social so I can oh, get a better so, look. So, <laughs> Sorry that about said, that. So that said, real quick, let me bring up um, one of her pictures that I am highly mm -hmm. fond of because I was, I think I was here when she took this one, right? Yes. Yep. You were. Yeah. Yep. So this is, uh, this is, like, you know, tell them about the picture because this is really cool. And this was at sunrise, I think. Sunrise or sunset? I can't tell now. Uh, sunrise. Yep. So yeah. we got up early and we uh, watched the sunrise. And um, yeah, uh, this was on a pier in Florida um, near like Pompano Beach. Um, so the yeah, this bird was sitting there and I was just watching them and trying to get my shots, you know, and uh, it was great. It was a cool experience because we don't really get too much of uh, these birds, you know, uh, in Maryland, um, so used to people, I guess. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was so gonna yeah. say, she didn't, uh, she didn't use any kind of fancy camera. She dug in, crawled up under that sucker and got the picture, man. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So yeah, let's see. Uh, that was probably my favorite. Um, this is some other stuff you can visit her on IG at uh, 1106 studios. We got some more Pelican stuff. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I wanted to mm -hmm. real quick, if we could explore a little bit. So, so there's different things, there's different menus on your website that it's uh, maybe difficult to see. So I'll just put the pictures up. Um, but there's, uh, there's a section called, you know, there's your collections, obviously, um, share your heart donations. Um, so, so what is, what are some of the things going on on your, on your webpage, at least? Mm -hmm. So uh, share your heart. My hope and goal for that is to create that connection. So I wanted to do postcards because I think taking the time to stop and write a message to another person is so important. Wow. If you know, if you've ever stopped and gotten a handwritten card from someone, it's like an amazing feeling that they took the time to write it out and put a stamp on it and put it in the mailbox and send it to you. So I wanted to highlight that and create a reason to do that almost like a reminder to slow down and you always hear give people the flowers while they're here but we don't always do that so we're always rushing to the next thing and busy and moving and moving so my hope is that people order them and they handwrite it and mail it but i know that if there's these kind of bar barriers in between they might not do it so one of the options i have is where you can go on type in your message I'll get it on the postcard. I'll send it to the person. Um, but I really, really, really hope that this allows people to slow down and connect with someone else. Because every person, when you see an image, I mean, the, the most exciting thing for me in the last week is everyone's responding to something differently. So, it, you know, and, and, or, and a different image. So it's not like there's just one that everyone's excited about. Every single person is having a different experience with a different image. And I think when that happens, just the act of you talking about your experience and what you feel, it allows you to show up as more of yourself in that moment. And it allows the people you're sharing it with to get to know another part of you. And that's what inspires me. That's my whole mission. I think, you know, paint on a canvas just so happens to be the medium, but really the mission is creating more opportunities. So that's why that share your heart was really important and a little play on words there. Um, to try and encourage people just to 
to do that, to take the time. And, and, and that person you haven't talked to in a while, just send that, send that light and send that love. I think that's really dope. I never thought about, um, you know, how much I do appreciate when I get a uh, handwritten anything, but you're right. It's like, oh, fancy pants. You actually mm -hmm. sat down and took the time to write this. Look at you. Aren't I special? You know, like I do get all, you know, warm and fuzzy inside. Like, okay, maybe I am somebody fanciful. Thank you. So I think that's really cool. And, um, you know, something we're sharing with people because, me personally, I don't see myself sitting down to write a lot, like a text message all day long, I will send them. But mm -hmm. to like sit down and write, and I don't even have bad handwriting, like there's no excuse. So mm -hmm. I don't even, like, what is that about? Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's a really good point. I love that. And then it's a keeps, and then you can hold on to it forever. You know, you, you remember when we were in like high school, you have all this list of things. I, I mean, I had a box of little keepsakes, like you know, this movie ticket and this, all these things. I actually still have my blockbuster card, <laughs> uh, you know, but, but having something that you can keep is, you know, really, and, and look at that as a reminder. If, like you said, it makes you feel special. And that's, to me, we're so in need of that right now that I want to create opportunities and remind people to slow down and spend time on things that are going to make someone else feel special. I think that's a great point. So um, Gina, would you say that you do anything um, creative with your art pieces in that same kind of way, not necessarily postcards, but do you um, sometimes autograph things or do anything to give it a personal touch for any of your folks? Like what, what, what do you think makes your art or your photography stand out if you're not doing something like that? Because obviously and, people follow you, right? Yeah, and how do you and how do you make it sustainable? Yeah, great question. Um, so I, um, I, I think I, I like to think of myself as an old soul. Sometimes um, I really always like. I think in fourth grade we took a trip to like Gettysburg, and um, they did the wax stamp um like to seal letters and stuff like that so i actually had made um or i got uh somebody from etsy to um like make me a like wooden uh handle you know with um the the metal stamper um that says 1106 studio so if anybody purchases one of like my, my framed photos or uh prints i'll i'll seal it with with that um, and as far as autographs, um, you know, autographing my pictures, I have not done that. Um, but I, I definitely like the idea of that, um, just cause it does put that individual, um, mark on the actual photo. Um, so, so yeah. 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 It was really interesting. Like I, so super fancy. I love the pouring the hot wax and putting yep. your stamp. I love that. Um, but I asked about the autograph because I saw that, um, this girl on, I don't know, Instagram, TikTok, one of the things she, with every piece of art, she sends like that authentication certificate and sure. she signs it and, and I'm like, this has not come with any art that I've ever ordered. So like, this is fancy and it, it gives it like, you know, a little elevated kind of context, even if, you know, it's something that she's printing at Staples. So it just made me yeah. think like it, it just elevates it just that much more. So at least that goes, you know, right along with handwritten or Gina giving a little extra, you know, whack situation because again i don't get either thing so fancy <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome chapo are you there with us i am i'm um since my since my camera's not up i'm actually looking through some really cool pictures um like this one on, I know, Gina, I on Gina's see. site i was asking i'm like what is this beautiful butterfly that i see in the background oh yeah yeah so if you want to share about that one gina it's a good one too yeah, so uh, we went to a butterfly museum that had uh, butterflies from all around the world. Um, and it was the most peaceful 
experience walking into that. Um, if you go back to that picture, I go back to the other one, the of the two butterflies in the black and white. Oh, yep, yeah, you got it. Um, so I particularly really love this photo. Um, I, I put a quote, um, I forget who it was by um, right off the top of my head, but um, but yeah, I just I just thought that something about this photo was really poetic um, in them like coming together, you know, and um, and yeah, I thought it was a uh, I put it in black and white just for um, like a mood effect, um, even though they were so beautiful in color. Um, I'm going to be posting more uh, butterfly uh, pictures soon. So uh, you guys can keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So let me, uh, let me, let me share real quick too. Um, so I joined um, Gina and her cousin and her family, uh, her mom and her mom and dad at the butterfly museum, but I, I'm a dude. Right. And I'm like, I'm doing a butterfly museum. Cause that's what the girls want to do. So like, so we, so the girls are going to get what they want. We're going to go. But let me tell you, um, let me tell the men out there, if, look, <laughs> I've been in, oh, like, I've been at least half the churches in Baltimore. I've been in, in um, and, and I tell you, when this place was a sanctuary, and when you, when you enter the space of the butterflies, where they lived, where they were mating, where they were flying, and just where they were, it, it felt like a blanket of, like, tranquility was just laid over you. Mm -hmm. it Absolutely. Was quiet, it was, it was so beautiful, and it was just so peaceful. It was such a sanctuary for me that I just didn't understand it to the point where I'm still, I'm still telling you about it. I was just like, I, I just couldn't believe how this, how this space made me feel. I'll just go and thought it was a tourist attraction. I'm going to go, but the, the butterflies created such peace, man. And I can't explain it, but it was really relaxing and refreshing. So no. So um, chat, I totally get that. I've been to a butterfly sanctuary before and the, I like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, they're as beautiful as birds, but they're not as big and scary. <laughs> and they're like as small as moths, but they're more beautiful. And so it's just like, they're harmless. They're so pretty to look at. Like, please give me all the butterflies. You're not gonna mm -hmm. bite me, sting me mm -hmm. or anything. Like I'll take all of them and they're yeah, this, beautiful. <laughs> this was my favorite one so far that I saw on her IG. Um, but I will, I will say that as well. I think, I think in my, in like in my soul, I knew they were the most completely harmless thing on earth. Maybe that's why I just like passively felt so calm. Mm -hmm. um, the other really cool thing that um, Gina didn't share was that uh, one of the butterflies landed on her mother's chest right yeah. where you would wear a brooch or a pin and stayed mm -hmm. there for like a, for a while, just chilled with her while she's starting to walk around the space, man. It was so cool. That's awesome. So, yeah. so on my Instagram, I have a picture of um, a brown one. It was actually that, um, that butterfly, but when it opened up, it was blue. Um, and it stayed open oh, on my yeah. mom's chest. And... Um, and yeah, it was crazy. It was very cool. That's, That's right. awesome. Yeah. And yeah. Butter butterflies only live for like two weeks after they go through all that to transform from the caterpillar to the butterfly. So I believe that they're here just to teach us that lesson about transformation and um, cause that all that, that they go through and then they're gone in like two weeks afterwards. It's what? I had no idea that their life expectancy was two freaking weeks. That's crazy. Now crazy. I'm sad. <laughs> yeah, I know it is sad, but that's, I mean, I think, and that's why I love your stuff, Nina too. And that it's so, uh, so much about nature because I believe that's how God can speak to us. You know, it, it's all pure. It's natural. So that is, I really love that. Yeah, I feel closest to God, you know, in the woods, sitting on a rock, you know, listening to the the water and and praying. You know, that's where um, that's where I feel most uh, gratitude and peace and um, just love. You know, okay. so yeah, I, I totally agree. I just had a thought that I got to share listening to you guys talk because um, I've experienced it at the butterfly thing. I'm not an outdoor person. I'm a city mouse, so I'm not going with Gina on no hikes if I don't, unless my wife says we're going. Because <laughs> I love them, because I love my, I love, I love my women's right. Um, and what you know, so what? But what I'm hearing is what my brain, my wheels are turning right, and what my spiritual mind is hearing is that um, this outdoor space and nature and being having access to nature refreshes you guys. It it restores you guys. You find rest. Your your hope tanks are refilled. Just being in space with nature. 
And then I look at what's going on in Baltimore and I see Baltimore peppered with a ton of churches that people can go to every Sunday and get yelled at or, or get yelled at in a good way or a bad way. You can scream and hoop and, you know, but, but we're, maybe we're distracted on a Sunday worried about getting to church every Sunday and not spending enough time refreshing ourselves in these more green spaces. Mm -hmm. Just, mm -hmm. just, just a thought. No, I think that that's really how, you know, God can get to us the best because <laughs> it's all that it's just straight from God. It's all nature is until humans get in the way and start to manipulate it. But <laughs> yeah. Right. You say get in the way and start to manipulate it. And the language I would use is ruin everything. <laughs> but that's besides the point, right? Yeah. Um, but to your point, like that's part of the reason why um, we started Walk with a Doc because folks weren't getting outside. They weren't talking to their neighbors. They weren't engaging with community. And it gives people a reason to come out of the house to meet a bunch of new folks and, you know, speak to a doctor about whatever your mental health or physical health or emotional health may be handling or dealing with at that moment. Mm -hmm. For example, um, somebody, I guess they were going through... Um, grief because of COVID, like they knew someone who passed away and, you know, they were the only one that asked about it. But then when, you know, af afterward, I'm like, well, who, you know, really gained anything from that? Are you going through? This? And nearly everybody is like, yes, I know someone who passed away from COVID, which means you've experienced grief in the last year or so. You know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. like, we're all going through these things, maybe separately and differently, but we're all experiencing it. And so I think to that point, nature kind of helps to ground us when, you know, we need to be grounded, but more importantly, um, you know, these kinds of shared spaces and conversations help as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is a Buddhist teaching and I'm trying to remember it so I could tell it and I can't put my finger on exactly how it goes. Maybe I'll try and Google it before we're done. But it was something about someone who lost, I think it was their child. Mm -hmm. And the Buddha or someone said, you know, go knock on every door until you find someone that hasn't experienced the same suffering. And, and you know, if you find someone that hasn't, I forget that, you know, that you'll be healed or whatever the case may be. But with the exercise where this person was going from house to house to house to all these people, they basically found that every person they talked to experienced grief and suffering. And then that allowed them to process it and deal with it and not feel like, oh, they're the victim, that that's just a part of life and that's okay. And you can heal through that community of coming together. So that is what, right. made, that's what I just thought of as you were speaking about that. Right. I mean, and it's not that we want to trauma bond or commiserate, but it's understanding that, you know, we're all going through the same things. It just looks different on different people. And mm -hmm. You know, some people wear it better and at times and other people don't or we handle it differently, but we're, we're all the same, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. just give me a hug when you see yeah. me, just give me a hug and thank you. You know, I tell yeah. everybody all the time. I'm a hugger um, and chap son Dougie knows I love the statistic. You need 12 hugs a day to remain healthy. So <laughs> if you're true. getting anything less than that, come on, <laughs> hug it up. Yep. Okay. He's, he's a hugger. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> Very cool. So uh, we still got we still got some good time. I wanted to share another um, piece from Elise's site. Um, sorry, it takes me a while, Elise, for the uh, pictures to load up on my computer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but this is one that I I like. I just out of your your sketches there. You want to tell mm -hmm. us about that? Thank you. So this was kind of um, yeah. It, it was there. There's not much depth behind this, I would say to me, but I would love to hear if anyone else sees any, because I think I just happen to put it on the paper, but it's what everyone brings to it. Um, but you're, it's really interesting chat because you're really picking all the ones that are usually not on the hit list. <laughs> so I, I like to see the variety. Um, no, but, I, well, I got a different perspective than most human beings. I, I, I can definitely confidently say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But this is more, this is like a fun one for me because Pretty Woman is one of my favorite movies. And there's a scene where she says like, yeah, let's just veg out on the couch, lay like broccoli. 
Um, oh. <laughs> she's trying to convince Richard Gere not to be serious and not to work and for them to just have fun and watch old movies and, you know, relax together. So that's kind of where this is. Lay like broccoli is a, is a pretty woman quote. So I don't know if anyone is a fan and caught that, but. <laughs> I, so, I would never admit that, but. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason that pose was giving me like pretty woman or something like sexy-ish. But I don't know that I recognize that quote, but I love Pretty Woman. So, and oh, yeah. I love the simplicity of this, but it's not really all that simple. You know what I mean? Like maybe the color is simple, but there's a lot of details in the twirls and the swirls of the crevices of the picture. So I, I love this. Thank and you. She, yeah, she has a couple of sketches like that. Let me see if I can back up to the to the see them. So we show them. Yeah, so she's got a couple right there. Um, I just thought that one was, yeah, relaxing, chilling. I, so. I think, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think in the world of, you know, us always putting up walls with one another or whatever, vulnerability, sometimes when you're vulnerable enough, it strips you down to the bare naked body, you know, and I think in that self is beautiful. And also like your strokes and your lines kind of, um, kind of remind me of like the depth of like the grit of life, you know, like as we pick things up throughout our life and we live. Um, so uh, yeah, I really like the vulnerability part of it. Um, I actually, uh, two days ago, I actually made a candle, um, and it was the naked woman's body. And mm -hmm. um, I just thought it was something really artsy and poetic I was, about that. I was, um, I was hoping you would show the candle, Gina. Yeah, <laughs> I love those candles. I love Did them. You see them. Let's see if I can find out. I'll be right back. <laughs> I've seen the um I've seen like the geometric molds of um like a woman's body, and I've seen the the smooth molds. I've even seen some recently of um, uh, plus size women and pregnant women. And I mm -hmm. said, yes, inclusive candles. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Like already getting a bunch of shades. So I thought that was cool, too. That's awesome. No, I'm Very actually cool. doing, I'm actually doing a uh, naked photo shoot for a maternity shoot um, coming up mm -hmm. soon. So I'm, I'm about that yeah but uh this is the candle i don't know if you guys can see it oh yeah very um, cool <laughs> but uh Next sorry super sexy <laughs> yeah yep so yeah that's awesome so, very yeah. cool. um, the scent the scent i put in it was um vanilla so it smells nice <laughs> mm -hmm. very cool yeah yeah definitely <laughs> giving me barbie body <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm interested to see what it looks like as the wax melts. You have to take a bunch of photos of that. That would be really cool. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. For time sure. lapse um, of it melting. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. I, I can see it now, like the moodiness of uh, an edit, you know, uh, as the flame is going. Yeah, for sure. I feel that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> And Mr. Hannah Blue Jr. says, yay, vanilla. <laughs> oh, look, William is watching with us. How about that's right, that? That's right. So <laughs> you guys, we still have 10 minutes. Um, I, one thing, one more thing I wanted to share was, uh, let me get this picture centered up, was uh, since you both like butterflies, I was going to share another picture on Elise's site of a butterfly. So <laughs> mm -hmm. there you go. Um, but I, I, I wanted to share real quick as well, um, while you guys are here, ask Quita, do we have any uh, community announcements? Because we have some artists we can get engaged and, um, you know, you guys come join us in fellowship and get inspired, refill your hope tanks, you mm -hmm. know, see where people are at and, and help them express themselves, express yourself. Like, I, I really love, I, I just really love our city. I love our community. And um, I know Quita's got, well, I'll let you, what do you got going on this weekend? Yeah, so can you pull up either of the two... Um documents that I preloaded, I can talk about those oh, sure. okay. and the stuff that the artists can get into. So this is the um, the resource fair for um, returning citizens. Let me see. Can I adjust how big that is? Let's see. Does that work? You can. Yep. Yep. There we go. 
and now I don't know if you guys can still read it, but this is for the um, resource fair that's going to be at New Song Academy this weekend. And if all things go well, I'll be able to bring one of the um, micro shelters there. So I'll get back into that, but that'll allow folks to see it, give some feedback, and also understand that these micro shelters, like the idea is that they will replace tents. And in comparison, it's like a no brainer, but it's not, you know, legal policy, yada, yada, yada. But anyway, this resource fair is for folks who are returning citizens. Um, we need um, donations. You can still sign up as a vendor. You can call Derek, who's on the um, on the flyer. And if you go to Smaltimore Homes Instagram, I'll put all this information in my story. And then again, pages of my journey. This is a book about um, weight loss as well as um, just kind of being yourself and getting into your new body and understanding how life is going to affect you as well as how food affects that healthy kind of journey. And so this is by um, Cody as well. And then you can bring it back to me, chat. This past weekend, we did a digital equity event in the Bel Air Edison area. Chat dropped by. Um, Steve dropped by. A bunch of people who have already been on the show, Charlene, have, were there. And it was really dope. Um, we got to talk about digital equity and the digital inequities in Baltimore and how there's a huge gap. Um, most households, um, for city students anyway, don't have a computer for each person, which made it difficult, created a bigger, you know, educational gap during virtual learning. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also things like understanding how a router works and understanding how a modem works. And if you don't understand that and something goes wrong, like then what? And um, do you have you know, access that is um, useful. Can you imagine using dial-up today? Not saying that most people are, because that's not true. Most people are just using their cell phones. But we all know that cell phones have limited, you know, um, functionality when it comes to the way websites work. So we were talking about all of that and how it affects um, folks in Baltimore and ways that we can combat that. Um, Chap was there. Um, being super helpful, moving and grooving like he always does. Uh, and that was our second digital equity event. And um, the resource fair is this weekend. And the next weekend, if you ladies are available, it would be dope if you could come out. Mm -hmm. We're building um, a micro shelter or we're <laughs> at least building the panels for the micro shelter. And um, if you've ever seen them, they're really bright and colorful, very welcoming. We want people to want them in their community, not, you know, say that looks like a whatever, fill in the blank. People come up with all kinds of things. But yeah, so that'll be next weekend. It's a two day event. Chap will be out there helping us, um, making sure that folks are doing what they need to do. And what is William Hollablue asking? The, in, the community information, yes, we're going to put it in the stories. And I guess, chat, if you want to, you can show it again. And some video of the event from this weekend is all over my Instagram page. I guess I can upload it to Black USA News and that's, we'll figure out how to yep. do that. How about that? Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. I think um, I think we need to, uh, we have a lot of great information. I think it's helpful, Q, if... Uh, we can get some um, maybe like a bi-weekly or weekly check-in on blackusa.news and bemorenews.com, get an editorial and, and really get the information available to you guys where stuff's going on. Um, and yeah. Yeah, because th there's tons of things. There's tons of things. And I know I just rattled off a ton of things. Did anyone have any feedback or want to say anything. I know we have about five minutes. I want folks to be able to say their goodbyes and hellos. Mm -hmm. So when is the, when are you guys doing the panels, Quita? What This weekend coming or the following? 
the following weekend, I'm going to look at a calendar so that I can tell you the right dates. And that would be Friday, April 29th mm-hmm. and Saturday, April 30th at... I'm drawing a blank here, people. I want <laughs> to say if you, Middle River Baptist Church, and I will contact you if that's a big fat lie. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, te- text me if if you, and I'll, I'll I can email to the you know if you still have my number, but um yeah that would be awesome. Yeah, and, and I'll make sure to put it on the um on the Small Small Homes website as well, so that folks can come out and volunteer, pop up, talk about their resources, their I don't know, their commitment to small to more and or the community. It's always a shared space. Whatever's going on, we always want the community to come out. Even if you have no intention of painting or building or whatever, it's still a whole vibe. And uh, awesome. I just want to comment, you guys. It says uh, Mr. Hanablu wants some of this goodness on his show. So it looks like you guys got to do some other shows on Black USA that news this month. Uh, we'll get you guys plugged in. And I think there's a, at least I, I want to say that I was inspired and never thought of it. Um, last time we, we had some artists on the show, they were talking about um, the tattoo guys, Aces and the other guy. We're talking about how to um, teach some of the younger um, artists and younger entrepreneurs how to sustain and monetize the work with teaching them how to do prints and things like that and giving them really great feedback. Um, and I want to, I think you build on that. Like once you learn to sustain and monetize what you're doing, partner with a, you know, a movement, a person or nonprofit, you know, is doing good in your community and give them a portion of what you're doing, you know, have your art, not just sustain you in itself, but the community around you. I think, you know, I think that's really huge. And I think that's a model that um, I'll tell you, that's a model that we're, we're building around for blackusa.news as, um, as we build our network and we're, we're gaining sponsorship. Part of the sponsorship is that when, Businesses sign on for sponsorship on the shows, um, different shows. We do websites, emailers. We have a huge network of people. Um, so as we're sharing your new business or, or a sponsor's business, we also like we also partner them with one nonprofit that also gets the same package they get for the same price. Mm. And so that like you you already are doing that, and that's something we've been talking about doing as well. So we're really excited to see other like minded people taking that initiative without us having to light that fire. It's already in us to give back. So I appreciate that. That's awesome. And if anyone wants to, you know, hop on and check out, I have a 20% off for Mother's Day. And for the rest of the month, it's going to go to Breadcoin for Baltimore, um, the donations. And then, like I said, we'll link up Quita for uh, see how we can help small to more homes maybe for next month for May. Awesome. Thank you so much. And then Gina, did you want to say anything before? I was going to say, little Gina, we'll let little Gina <laughs> have the uh, closing words tonight. I just want to thank you guys for like having me on and it's so nice to be able to meet new people like Elise and um, you know uh, reconnect with people like Rita and everything so um, yeah I just appreciate you guys' time and it's been fun it's been fun (laughs) I love that we had you on I love that we had you on Elise welcome back we'll have to have you guys on again William wants you guys on there. He's also big enough. Bread coin. This is just like a super love fest. This is how I get down. This is this is how, you know, this is how we love to do things. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's see. It looks like we need to go ahead and wrap up, but we will be back next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Thanks for coming out. God bless and good night, all. Mm-hmm.